Mr. Danielson will be fi filming us today. Uh, so thank you for being here, Bruce. Good evening. We will uh, get started here. There may be a few more that come in. Is there anybody that did not get one of the handouts that needs one? Okay, my name is Jamie Nold. I'm Assistant Superintendent with the Sioux Falls Schools. And I'll go through the process uh, so far that we have utilized or some of the information you may be uh, most interested in at this point in date with the calendar adoption process. I'll try to give you a few examples. Um, some of those things, like the three calendars uh, that we're using for conversation piece are in front of you, and I'll talk about those coming up, but I'll also go through the information about the surveys uh, and some of the other things that we utilize to be able to get to the point where we're at right now. After that time, we'll have a time where people are, are welcome to come up and speak, and I'll kind of outline that just a little bit in advance of this as well. So to start out with here, and if I stay in your guys' way too much, help me out and I'll try to move it on. So first of all, the input sessions, this being the second of the two that we are utilizing, and so I will not spend much time on that, but I will go into first of all the survey. So what we're trying to do as part of the calendar committee and the adoption process is to make sure that we get input and feedback from the stakeholders. Now the stakeholders, we looked at a few different things. We looked at our student groups, uh, but each of these were kept separate. So our student groups, middle school and high school. Uh, we also looked at our staff and did a survey with them, and then also the parent participation on that. So the survey that went out to the parents. Total, there was over 10,000 respondents to the survey. Each one of those groups we kept into separate categories. With the respondents, there was over 5,000 of which there were parents that have responded to the survey that we sent out as far as the start dates. Truly with the survey, we were first of all looking at question one. When do you prefer the school year start? The committee is considering the following options. Obviously, after Labor Day and before Labor Day. And we'll go through the results of that in each one of those groups here just shortly. The second question that we looked at, so regardless of how they answered the first question, we still wanted a response to the second question. The second question would pertain to, if it started prior to Labor Day, how far before Labor Day would we start? The reasoning for the two different responses, six to eight days, where it start maybe somewhere a week and a half prior to the Labor Day, at least in number of school days, is so that the semester would end just after that December break. The other option with the 10 days prior would allow enough days to be able to end that first semester prior to the December break. So really looking at three, the three things, before Labor Day or after Labor Day. If it ended up being prior to Labor Day, how far before? Was it important enough to end that first semester prior to the December break or just shortly thereafter? And I'll kind of go through a few of the highlight points as to how that impacts different groups here just shortly. So those are the questions that we utilize for the calendar survey and that input from our community. The responses. So first of all, the parent group. This group, there was over 5,000 responses, which made up over half the responses we received back. But keep in mind, we kept every one of the groups separate. We just want to look at the response from each of the different groups. In this group, response to question number one, 44% have responded to start after Labor Day. 55.9% responded to start prior to Labor Day. In that second question, 31.6% of the parent respondents requested to start about six to eight days prior, which means that first semester would end just after the December break. And 67% responded to start 10 days prior, but never earlier than the 20th, so that, that first semester would end prior to the December break. So that was the parent response group. The second group that we took information back on. Student survey. Student survey, there was just under 3,000 respondents in the student survey. The predominance there again, after Labor Day start, about 35.6%. Prior to Labor Day start, 64.4%. And then you look at the two groups again, 
six to eight days prior uh, ended up being just under 24% for that. And then 75.7% had opted to start August 20th uh, or 10 days prior. And again, the difference with those two, one of them allows the first semester to, to finish up just after the December break, probably that second week back. And the other option is so that the uh, first semester would end prior to the December break. Okay, students part, uh, now the staff survey. The staff survey, similar responses there in the first question where we looked at that after Labor Day start, 33% of the staff had designated that and 66.7% before Labor Day. The response to question two, if you look at that, this was by far the closest in those two responses. There's 46.8% that had opted to start about six to eight days prior, 52.7% opted to start 10 days prior, but never earlier than the 20. Where we saw probably a distinction in there is a the difference between our high school to our elementary. So quite a bit of a breakdown as it flowed from the high school uh, staff responses down into the elementary staff responses. So each of these were just one way for our committee to be able to get feedback from the stakeholders who were impacted by this. Obviously now the two input sessions are one other format for us to be able to gain some insight from this as well. I will show you later on but you can see that in the handout that you have but there's also a way that you can get feedback online. So if you'd like to, you can go online and provide our committee feedback as well. I will take the responses of that and share that with the committee as well. So if you prefer later on not to stand up and speak, by all means, go online and give us that same feedback. I'll go on to the next part. This is just the calendar survey. This whole report with the survey information and other things you can find at the Sioux Falls School District webpage as well. So if you click on there, you can see that full report with all that same information. So let's just put it into a bar graph. The part I'll show here is just some of the different dates that we were looking at. So you kind of get a little bit of a comparison. Each one of the dates you'll see after these first two are all some type of a compromise of the after Labor Day and prior to Labor Day, previous start dates that we've had. It just depends on the degree of compromise that you look at. So first of all, if you just pay attention to the top part, previous to current calendar, so August 2006 to August 2014, the average start date was August 19th. But I also show you the range on there. The earliest date that it had started was August 16th. The latest was August 22nd. Somebody had asked me at the last meeting, can you go back even further? So I went back, I think it was about 10 more years even prior to that, August 2006, and I think the range went from the 16th, then it went up to the 29th, somewhere in there over those days. I think the average ended up being about the same on that. But for the years there, and I have those numbers, I could, I could share those if people would want. But the previous uh, calendar we've had from August 2006 to August 2014, the average was the 19th, and the range went from the 16th to the 22nd. The after Labor Day start, if we looked at that going out from September 2016 all the way to 2026, that average day would be the 5th as far as the start date. The range would go anywhere from September 2nd to September 8th. So as you know with the calendar, as it keeps going from year to year, it pulls forward and usually takes about five, six years until it drops back again. And so part of that comes into play as well when you really look at what that range is. So some of the things that we tried to look at as we're going through with some different dates is first of all, starting on the second to last Monday in August. So if it just stayed as a consistent rule of starting on the second to last Monday, that range, would, the average would be August 21st, the range would be August 18th to August 24th. As I looked at that going all the way out to August 2027. You don't have a calendar that would bring that forward in there because we looked at it really as probably being just too early on that date of August 18th when you start to look at that range. So there isn't even one of these options in there to look at. The second one here is where I've referenced a few different times and that was in part of the survey starting 10 school days prior to Labor Day but never prior to August 
20. In there, as you can see, the average start date would be August 22nd, and the range would go anywhere from the 20th to the 24th. Now, that wouldn't always start on a Monday. Sometimes that 20th keeps moving ahead to where I think eventually at one point in time it's on a Wednesday during that week, and then it drops back again the next year to that Monday. The part with the first part, the second one on here, is uh, that would allow enough days for that first semester to be done prior to the December break. So really try to look at if that was going to happen, how many days would it take? And it really needed to almost be about that many days to get it done prior. And I'll talk a little bit later as to how we figured out why we needed that many days into the first semester. So that would be the range on anywhere from the 20th to the 24th. Average if starting two Wednesdays prior to Labor Day. One thing that came up uh, with some of the groups is can we have a short week in that first week, especially with our elementaries? Uh, they looked at that maybe more so than some of the other groups on there. If we look at that, uh, the average range on there would probably be from August, or the average would be August 23rd. The range would go anywhere from the 20th to the 26th, but sometimes that Wednesday does fall on the 20th, depending on what year we look out at. Now, that would probably not end up allowing enough days to end the first semester prior to December break. So there's a lot of things to look at, and trying to make one calendar fit everybody's need is not going to happen. So we try to look to see what can we do as a compromise somewhere in between that. So those are the different types of things we're looking at. I'll explain some of the benefits to each one of those as well as we go forward here. Considerations. One thing that was discussed quite a bit, at least in the past, was the semester test. More of which would be a high school issue on that, although there are semester tests in middle school classes as well, especially if they're taking that class for high school prep, algebra one, Spanish one, some other classes like that. So one of the things we looked at is semester tests. And that, if that was going to end prior to the December break, we'd need about that 10 days prior, no earlier than the 20. The second thing that we look at, time for Labor Day. Uh, obviously, if it started after Labor Day break, it would be built into that. If it starts before, how do we look at that Labor Day break? So one of the things that was discussed uh, quite a bit was taking a four-day weekend that weekend. Uh, whether that comes out to be one of the, the final calendar options, I don't know. And that's something hopefully we'll hear from you as community members, what are some things you would like to see in there. So that time for Labor Day weekend is something that we had looked at. The compromise start date, I talked about that a little bit already. Uh, all that is based on how much of a compromise or how much of a move back from what used to be the average. AP exams and courses, May 12, 2017 is where the AP test will end for the last day of testing and it goes over a two week time period. But this year, I believe it's May 12, other than the makeup test, I'm not sure when that date is, but May 12, 2017, I think is the last day of this year. I don't know the date for 2018. So I kind of compare that and use it, but it's one of the things we're thinking about. Uh, granted, there can still be things done after an AP exam in a classroom, but the majority of students working for AP, uh, they'll have that credit count for colleges, it's based on that test. And so the study for things for a test that you've already taken is where some of that concern came into. Shorter week at the start of the year, especially in the elementary. How do we make that first week a little shorter to make uh, it easier for our, our kindergarten and older students uh, in the elementary to acclimate back into a schedule like that? So we try to keep that into consideration. Just under 40% of the students at LHS, RHS, and WHS, because uh, New Tech High would not have some of those same activities, but in those three high schools are back in mid-August already, or the first part of August due to activities. Graduation date. Uh, one of the things that we've heard quite a few times is not having graduation on Memorial Day weekend uh, and trying to keep it off of that weekend. And then balance semesters between first semester and the second semester. The first semester can be a little bit shorter because of the state mandated testing that we have in the second semester of the school year. That eats up a few of those days. There'll be instructional days, they're just not a typical day. So we can make the first semester slightly shorter than the second semester, and it'll still balance out because of some of those days that we uh, lose some of the academics with the testing. 
So those are things that we keep into consideration. There's other things as well, especially as people have been bringing ideas forward, we try to take that into consideration. Our committee that we have, calendar committee, has 25 individuals on the committee. Uh, eventually, as we go through this process, we will make a recommendation to the school board. Ultimately, the school board uh, decides what calendar will be adopted through that, but our committee will make the recommendation to the school board. So those are considerations. I'll go into a little bit, I won't spend much time on this at all. Some people get a little bit confused on the calendar or how many days is it. It's truly based on minutes and you can't count passing minutes and, and it's different periods or parts of the day that do not count in, lunch periods don't count into that. Uh, so it's the number of minutes of instructional time and we have a state minimum that we have to adhere to. Uh, if you wish to see all those guidelines, by all means go on the website and you can look at it. It's right under that calendar report. I won't go through it all with you now. But if you try to count days, some people have done that, uh, it won't add up to 176 because the state does also allow um, time for parent-teacher conferences and inserts. The Sioux Falls School District is a, well above the requirements. We always have been and will be. So that part is not a concern, but that's how it comes up to you. But we really have to look at the 176 days. But two days, if you go through there and count it for the high school, it won't show up on there because it's going to be in-service and uh, parent-teacher conferences. Okay, so in the packet that you have, you will be able to see three different calendars in there. It is not that this is going to be, hey, we're choosing calendar one, calendar two, or calendar three. It is not that. It's just for something as a point of reference. May it end up being one of those? Maybe. I don't know. But it is not that we're just trying to figure out which one we're going to take, one, two, or three. As a matter of fact, calendar number two is not important. So as I go through this, I'll kind of highlight a couple of the points that we look at on there. This first one that you look at, the start date out there is, is August 20th. So that's right over there, that August 20th date, which is a Monday. That's really looking at that 10 days prior, but never earlier than the 20th. So for the 17-18 calendar, that would be on a Monday, Monday the 20th. As we go through, this would allow the first semester to end there on December 20th, which is prior to that December break. I put down, you won't see this on yours, but you'll see it in another spot down there, but the count, the date count. What this does is allow 85 to 86 days. Why am I putting a margin in there? Because it all depends on what we do on this 21st. That could become a school day. But it allows us to have between 85 and 86 days in the first semester, and then 88 or 89 in the second semester, which will work out just fine because of that state test. One of the other parts of this is it does not, because as you saw earlier in those survey results, the parent one, the student one, was fairly significant to the part of ending prior to the December break. The staff one, if you remember seeing that, it was pretty divided, almost 50-50. And so part of the request on there is with our elementary, they're not as concerned about ending prior to the December break. Each of the groups have talked about starting 10 days prior, but elementary was not as concerned about ending prior to that December break. The other thing on this calendar, if you look, uh, the end of the year is on the 15th of May. And if you remember with the AP exams, I'm going to guess that's going to end probably on the 10th for that year, but they haven't put the dates up yet. But if I follow back on previous years, it'll probably end on the 10th of that year. So that helps in a few different things that way. This is the calendar that if we started on the 20th or that 10 days prior, but never earlier than the 20th. This next calendar, keep in mind I said this one isn't going to work. This is where some said, well, let's have a little more of the best of everything. Maybe start in the middle of the week. So we're starting on a Wednesday, the 22nd, ending on the 20th, or we could go to the 21st, depending on how we work that out. In there, it would only give us 83 to 84 days in the first semester. With semester-based classes, it's too much of an imbalance. So you can't have what we're going to start in the middle of the week possibly even take a, a four-day weekend on the Labor Day weekend 
and then still in prior to the December break. So I say we look at this calendar, yeah, we're trying to incorporate a lot of things. It would hold a lot of things that maybe people sought for, but there just isn't a good balance of the day. So it doesn't make academic sense to imbalance it that much when we have semester classes for both the middle and high school. It would not have probably much of an impact on the elementary level. The third calendar that you see on there is where we look at a few of the other parts, but the biggest piece on this one is we would come back and spend two weeks time period in there after the December break. So this one would have a starting on the 23rd, 24th, so it's a two day week that first week, and then would have a four day break in there on the 31st and then the weekend. So it'd be a four day break with the Labor Day weekend. It would, though, require to come back after January to be able to get enough days into that first semester. So our first semester would be at 87 days. It would then move graduation back into that next week. The graduation week would be there on the 21st. Now, some strengths of this. It starts with a short week, a little longer Labor Day week. In. Um, we'd have to come back into January. AP tests would be impacted a little bit more so because of the fact that they ended on the 10th. That's about a week and a half's worth of time that they would not have preparing for the AP exam. It would be after the exam. Now, for some students, because you got to remember the AP exam may start up over here, so they'll take their AP exam at the end of April, so they may have four or five weeks, but that's going to happen for some students who are up because they take it over a two week time period. Each test is assigned a different day. This would balance the two semesters, uh, as we're looking at. But like I said, it would give a four-day weekend. Now, there could be ideas you have that combine some different things in here. Um, maybe still keep that weekend, but then the Labor Day weekend is a longer weekend, short weeks, but then it probably has to end after that December break. There has also been a few different ideas sent to me in the last couple weeks here uh, thinking a little outside of the box that possibly high school starts three days prior than middle school and elementary. Middle school and elementary ends three days after high school. Uh, so middle school and ele elementary, I'm sorry, middle school elementary uh, would have that short week because it started a little weaker, but their semester would not end until after the December break. But the high school would end prior to the December break, but then high school would start at the 20th, and about 40% of the high school students are in fact anyway. Will that be an option? I don't know. We're considering all things at this point in time. Why do I tell you that? Not to persuade you to take that. It's just that if you can think of something that may help us come to a decision that's in the best interest of everyone, that'd be greatly appreciated. So, nice thing is, I get to stop talking. Uh, I thought there needed to be a pause for that. <laughs> Thank you. Val is happy when I stop talking. One other thing here before I do uh, put the mic back up there and just take uh, public comments then. Uh, first of all, our school board members. We do have multiple school board members. I, I don't know if I saw everybody yet, but most of them are here, if not all of which. And so they have been at, at each of the two input sessions, listening, trying to take some of that feedback and information. Same well as Dr. Monger, our superintendent. And it is important. Uh, we are trying to go through and get the feedback, and we've tried to do this through multiple different avenues so we can come up with something that is good and makes sense, educational sense, and sense for our community. So we'd appreciate your feedback. One thing I will ask as you go through is state your ideas, state your reasons. Uh, other people may have a different view, and that's okay. It's all right that they can state their views and their ideas. Please keep it to your ideas, uh, theirs, are important to them, but state yours. We'll take that information. I do have a recorder, so I try to record it. Uh, not that we can call you or, or give it to somebody, but so that I have that information because we'll go back and listen to it and make sure I get that information down so we can share it back with our committee. So the guidelines we'll put forward on this, if you can somewhat be brief so that people have the ability to go through, uh, ask that you limit it to somewhere around two minutes, ask that you be respectful of other people's information and comments, and you can, by all means, bring up your own ideas and concepts. Uh, if you would, when you come forward, just state your name and then what your association is with the Sioux Falls School District. So if you're a teacher, a parent, a student, 
or a community member. And if you state those things, uh, that'd be great information just so we know from the perspective you come from. So I will put the mic up here. I will have a seat. As you feel comfortable, come up and share that information. If you don't wish to share it publicly, by all means, go online and fill that information out online, and I will share that with the committee as well. So I will put the mic up here. You're welcome to come. ago, um, which I don't think either side wanted. It, 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 it like became a life of its own, where we were all digging in our heels trying to, to get our point across. Um, unfortunately, it did not seem at that time the school board was willing to compromise with us and we ended up going to a vote. What I'm mystified today is 
that calendar number one is the calendar we have that took it to a vote. So I'm, I'm really confused why we've got that and why you guys aren't listening as the first speaker said that I think every side wants to compromise, but that doesn't appear to be a compromise to me at all. It looks like the exact same. So I hope that you hear us when I say that we will be willing to, to do what we have to do if we can't compromise. Um, I too have a son, came back after Christmas, he loved it, he loved taking his finals after Christmas. I think that we have learned that the testing um, is not, I guess, get worse or better when you have it before or after Christmas. Um, I don't think there's the statistics that were getting shared earlier on that it makes a difference whether you test before or after the Christmas break. So I, I would like to learn a little bit more about that, why we're kind of insisting on that. Um, I would also, I guess, like to point out that the, the AP test, which was such a big argument the first time around, um, went up 4%. I understand that maybe the, the percentage of people in the AP classes were down, but the, the testing did go up. So if there's not an academic reason for the calendar not to shift maybe to that last Monday in August. Um, I, I'd just be more interested in learning a little bit more about the academic part of this, which I think is probably what we're all in this room for, is the academia of our children. And if you cannot point to statistics showing that there is a problem with the calendar being as is, um, I'm not sure what we're doing here. But I, I do honestly appreciate that you're giving us the opportunity to speak. Um, I can speak for my family. We love this. I, I don't know what's wrong with it. We literally went to a vote, and we have Labor Day to Memorial Day. It appears that grades are going up or testing is going up. So I'm, I'm, I'd be interested in understanding why that's not being considered as one of the options for the calendar.
I agree 100% uh, with the first speaker. Where's the compromise? The, the first day of school on all three calendars, either the 20th, 22nd, or 23rd. What about the last week? Last week in August. It doesn't have to be after Labor Day, but the last week in August is where I would be happy with. I'm fine with after Labor Day, too. Um, the heat, nobody mentioned the heat factor at the end of August. <coughs> um, starting school on August 20th, we all know how hot it is. The kids are hot too. Not all the schools have air conditioning. When I was growing up, we never had semester tests uh, before Christmas break. Did we survive? Yes. Bruce Danielson. I don't have any kids in school, but I've, I've had to work with a lot of them in a lot of the work that I do. And one of the things I do is I data mine and I work with numbers. And so I'm trying to understand how percentages mean anything when we don't actually see any of the numbers that go with it. So in preparation for this and trying to understand this thing, I actually was hoping you'd have an overhead here so I could actually put some things out. But, but uh, I'm going to just kind of go through this thing because according to the sources that I've, that I've talked with, it appears the Sioux Falls school system is perpetrating a fraud. How's this? Apparently, the school system's published polling is allowing some interesting voting test procedures. Since the school district is not, uh, in a, since the school district is not uh, have a way in, to win in the polling booth, they had to create a poll of the district at, to create a result. The Save Our Schools group fought to set reasonable school start dates and won an election in 2015. Time has flown by and it's now time to set the future's calendars. So reports were that the school district was not even talking with SOS, Save Our Schools. So the district is ignoring all the work that, that went through getting this onto the, onto the ballot, and <laughs> one resoundingly, the current way that we're doing the, the school start date. So pushing the recent polling in the press to make it look like the 2015 vote was a mistake. These appear to be the rules. No students, no vote, or invitation to vote. I never got an invitation to vote. I had no idea that this was going on. And I'm a property owner. Every household with a student has got at least a vote. Every school teacher gets a vote. Every middle school student gets a vote from grades six through eight. Every high school student gets a vote, grades nine through 12. So thinking about the formula, the polling started out not letting households with no children zero votes. If the household has only grade school students, they get one vote. If the household has a school teacher, they get two votes. If the household has Two teachers, they get actually three votes. If this household has, has one to four uh, students in high school, add an additional vote to the household total. If the household has any students in the middle school, we can let them add up to three more votes for that household. So this is how it breaks down. You have no kids, you're screwed, you just pay your taxes and shut up. You have kids in grade school, you get one vote, and suffer as they get older. All the other households can sway public opinion by stacking the votes to screw everybody else out of their voice. So if our math is even at a fourth grade level, we see a chance for some Sioux Falls households to easily have 10 plus votes versus the rest of us not having any or one. This is not a level playing field for all citizens of Sioux Falls. This is the Sioux Falls school system creating a fake groundswell to going back to the way it was. And I've been looking at these three calendars, and there's no compromise in those calendars. It's, I don't care, uh, after, 
I write software, I do data mining, I'm looking at this thing and I'm just saying, this whole thing is a joke and I think you guys need to get back to the drawing board and do some, some serious thinking about it. Thank you.
in order to get us practice taking AP exam, our extra credit over the um, over breaks like Thanksgiving or Christmas is an AP test with the questions crossed out that we haven't learned yet. These are the kind of academic changes that we're seeing, where we're forced to push everything into a shorter amount of time and forced to change how we teach to make sure that everything gets in between a first semester and a second semester. <coughs> that is an academic change. I understand there are test scores rising, but there are less kids taking AP tests by a small amount. As well as anecdotally, as I hear people um, talk to me and talk to others, they see how they're like, well, I thought about taking that class, but it was just too much. AP psychology used to be able to be done in the semester. Post the calendar, it has to be done in the year. These are the kind of academic changes we're seeing. I also wanted to just mention, um, especially high school students are in a very um, critical portion in their development where they see a lot of changes as they're moving from being with their families to college. And the stress that we see on a high school level is immense. And the stress that's added as the change in the calendar has happened where we're doing homework over breaks, even though some kids don't study, there are even more kids that do. I know I, it seemed like I was waiting for Santa on Christmas Eve because I had to do my AP US history homework till 11.59. The kind of people, there are people who study over breaks. And when they study over breaks, it's not a break anymore. That's just more homework time. And that is really detrimental on mental health. If you don't have a time to recharge and not think about school, it's, it's really hard. And it's really hard to catch up. There always needs to be a time where you can just take a break. And when you have to be studying over every break, especially Christmas seniors finals are very soon. I know the draft three of this calendar has the um, semester test even earlier than they are now, would even increase that kind of pressure. Um, those were the main things I wanted to talk about. I would say that as I've been hearing the differences, I see that a compromise is hard to reach. I think having a different start date for elementary and middle schools versus high schools could maybe work, especially as we're seeing that the difference between the elementary and high school students is really where the divide is at. However, I see there's definitely going to be problems with daycare and that kind of thing and how to take care of students when they don't have high school students to take care of them. I see there's problems looking forward. However, I would like to just continue to thank the school district and to thank the community for allowing the students to have a voice. The vote two years ago, I was 15 years old. And I had a lot of opinions. I stood on a street corner, but I couldn't vote. So my, my voice and my classmates' voices were never heard, even though this is what's affecting us. So I just wanted to really thank the school district, thank everyone for having allowing students to continue to have their voice in what's determining their education. Brad Newitt. I'm a teacher here at Lincoln High School and uh, first of all I'd just like to thank the school district for opening up a lot more dialogue about the school calendar now. I think in the past 
we didn't do a very good job of that in the school district, and we kind of just had this committee to put the calendar together, and then it was presented to the school board, and there was just a lot of unknowns with it. So I think this has been really great to see us have this dialogue and for us to be talking about it, um, have these input sessions, have some surveys, give everyone a chance to um, you know, kind of say what they think. Because I know last time, uh, obviously with the vote, I think it was already said, I think that did bring a lot of just, uh, divisiveness in our community, and I think that was, I think, really hard for a lot of us. So um, just a couple thoughts I had. Uh, I can give you a teacher perspective on this from the high school level. Um, and uh, first of all, I would say I do think that some of the calendars that have been uh, presented are a compromise, in my opinion, from where we were, because I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we were starting three weeks before Labor Day in a lot of our calendars, and I don't see any of the ones up here that are in that uh, vicinity. Um, we're all, all these are a later start than that. Um, just a few things that I observed from my students, um, you know, taking final exams at, at the high school level is a really, really big deal. They count for 15% of the high school semester grade, which is a big chunk of their semester grade. So there is a lot of pressure on the students to do well on them because it does impact their grade quite a bit. Um, one thing I would caution us to, as far as like going back 20 plus years and looking at calendars is that wasn't the case then. So we might want to be a little bit careful about how far back we go when we start looking at academic data and those sort of things. Um, I know there's been some question about academic data. Uh, up to this point, you know, we really only have one school year to compare to, and I think another gentleman was up here talking about statistics, and I think we do need to be really careful about looking at one year's data and trying to draw a lot of conclusions from it. Um, we certainly see variance in scores testing-wise from year to year. So um, to compare AP scores you know, one year of AP scores versus 15 years of AP scores probably is not a really great idea. Uh, I think we would need a little more data to do that. Um, so I would just throw that out there to be careful before we start jumping to too many conclusions about, you know, what's working and what's not working based on test scores, in my opinion. Um, I thought the survey um, that was given was, uh, you know, and I'm, well, I'm not on the committee, so I don't know what the exact design of it was, but to me it surveyed the people that are currently involved in the school district as far as parents, students, staff. Um, certainly the survey didn't go out to those who weren't involved in the school district, and maybe it should have. Um, but as you look at that data, look at it as those are the, the people who are the stakeholders that are currently involved in what's going on here. Um, to me, when I saw that, it, showed that a majority of the people that are currently involved really like maybe starting after Labor Day. Now, that's a pretty general question. I think we still need to drill down to where that point is. Like, to me, that sounds like maybe what the debate is. One week before Labor Day, two weeks before Labor Day. Maybe there needs to be another survey that's a little bit more specific to that. Because um, to me, it seems like we're getting hung up here on about five days as I hear people talking. So those are just a few thoughts. Um, that I wanted to share tonight. Thank you. Hi, my name is Michelle Lawler, and I come at this. I have a, a sophomore in college a high school senior and a ninth grader. And um, when I look at the whole picture of what school is about, it's preparing our kids for their life, their entire life. And from what I have read, what we want to encourage our kids to do their best, we want to give them, encourage them to take the most challenging courses that they can. Because colleges and employers will look at how much they challenge themselves. So, um, I think that it's really important that we send our kids a message to, to do that. And, and I was just looking, Mr. Noah, not to get hung up on numbers, but there was a decrease in the number of kids taking AP tests last year. So for whatever reason that is, but it went down about 8%. So it could be just a random uh, thing. But I'm, I'm concerned 
that we have kids who aren't doing that, particularly when I look at the, the South Dakota colleges all start about August 22nd, I believe. Augie starts a little bit later, so I'm not sure why people would want to go too far out of range. I have 80% of kids go to school in the state that they are, so we're going to figure that most of these kids are going to graduate. They're going to be going to school starting August 22nd. Um, they are done in the middle of May, so for a kid who is in high school who wants to get a summer job, they are coming into the summer job market after the college kids are back. So if a high school kid needs a job to be getting money for college, another thing is that as an AP class, um, it sounded somewhat like AP classes weren't necessarily taken standardly, but if I look at the South Dakota schools, uh, the University of South Dakota, SDSU, School of Mines, almost all of them take credit for the AP classes, typically if they get a four or five on the test. So it would seem to me that we would want to be encouraging the kids to, to be able to take advantage of that, particularly if they're a disadvantaged family. Um, I know families that can, the kids can get through a quarter of their education without having to pay for it. It gives them opportunities to try different majors perhaps, but they are, they have gained um, credibility in the universities, they have gained time in their academics, and I think I think we want to do whatever we can to launch them into their future in the best way. And uh, I think that, that uh, before Labor Day certainly, and I'm not too particularly concerned about where the finals are in the middle of the year, but it's so that they are prepared for those tests is really, really helpful. Thank you.
there's different viewpoints that are being made. And it makes me start to look at one of the, the other possibilities of thinking outside the box. The first question that came up in my mind is, are there comparisons against any schools in this area? Okay, for calendars. Um, for example, there are, we all are surrounded by Harrisburg School District, uh, there's a Brandon School District, you know, we've got several different school districts. We've also got private school districts right here in Sioux Falls. Are our calendars in pretty much alignment with them? Okay, that makes more sense to take a look and have an honest answer there from a community standpoint. Next, the comparison of different calendars for elementary, middle school versus high school. I can tell you it's straight up. I've seen it and witnessed it many times as far as the dependence on high school people and middle school people to help their elementary siblings. I don't know if there's any way to get statistics of what you've got for elementary versus middle school and senior siblings. Okay, there's a dependence there big time. If there's not a big ratio of that, then it makes sense that there's a separate, it's okay to go with a separate calendar. But I can honestly tell you that a lot of elementary rely on their older siblings for existence. The next thing I wanted to just bring up here is about this accelerated calendar and to relook at the AP curriculum load. I've heard the comments that have been made, really respect those comments because there is a tremendous amount of stress on junior high people. The one thing that comes to mind when you were talking about that with that load is that to revisit your curriculum load, to realize what it's going to take for you, and maybe get creative on calendars to those people that are in AP classes. They may not fit the mold for the regular class, and that will minimize the stress. I know where they're going. They, they want to prove themselves so that they're marketable to universities. I understand that. But they also need to take care of the human part of them, too. And the final thing that I just want to bring up is I'm always careful and respectful of there's a lot of, of a push to try to get students to learn and to grab on, okay, for more information, quicker, et cetera. We've got tons of tools to do that. But the one and most important thing that always comes back is that I have so much respect for everybody in this room, matter of fact, when we focus on creating a learning environment. Whatever we can do as a community to help that is number one. So I wanted to bring up these points because honestly I think I come from a pretty wide perspective of what's happening across the school district and also from a community standpoint. I've been one of those seniors that took all those AP classes. I've been one of those students that pushed myself for all I was worth a scientist. I've been there. I understand that. Okay? But I also understand another factor, and that is, is that unless you do it realistically, it won't do you any good long run. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very much for giving me a few minutes of your time. Again, I'd like to stick with the forum. Thank you. Labor Day, um, then the last week. And uh, it, it's hard to see the percentages and the dissension that it's caused in our district when we all have the same goal. Um, so speaking of um, creative ideas, I realize that the calendar um, for the up 
upcoming year is voted on in April. Tomorrow is February 1st, and uh, whether it's a new survey or whatever, I mean, is, is that another creative solution to um, back that up? If it's not, you know, for the 18, 19 school year, does it have to be, you know, set in stone in two months when it seems like there might be a lot of work that still needs to be done? Um, so we just experienced our first round of semester tests. 
uh, which was after Christmas. Um, I've asked for factual data regarding semester tests before Christmas, after Christmas, and I've been advised that it's a matter of convenience. And so I realize it's convenient for some before Christmas, and I realize it's a matter of convenience after Christmas. I will tell you for our family, after Christmas was way more convenient for us, but I know that's not the case for everybody else. Um, there's been so much that's gone in the last eight years. The first thing I want to do is thank Dr. Mahar because he's actually had an open door policy of talking about this, which we didn't have in the past. And then I also want to thank the fact that <laughs> And then I actually want to, I mean, I think it's awesome that teachers have gotten up here and spoken. That is nothing that happened the last time around. They felt intimidated to do it. And I think it is amazing that they've been able to have a voice in this process just in this room tonight. So thank you for that.
I've been a teacher for 20 years in the district, and now I just do them part time. So um, I agree. I think we're back maybe to where we started with before or after Labor Day. Unfortunately, that's the question that seems to be asked, and not really what was really wanted. And um, so when I took the survey, I was a little wondering why why was the question asked that way? Because when you look at eight days to ten days six to eight days or 10 days, it doesn't seem like two to three days is a compromise. And um, I also feel like we're really talking about five days. And I think that that's not a good time use of our time, that the compromise hasn't been made. Um, we liked having those, the fall sports, our kids are in fall sports, and having those two day practices and not being in school, I agree, they're not exhausted. They're not missing school. Um, so I also think we're making those well-rounded schools. I do not believe that our calendar should be driven by AT, AP classes and AP tests. Um, so in clean, if I could say it like you, I would have. You did a smooth job. Thank you.
boys, one in uh, middle school at Memorial and two um, at All City Elementary. And so being a parent at All City Elementary, you're also involved in the classroom and you see the day-to-day -day interactions with the students of how Sounder actually does impact those little elementary students. And so seeing that and having that perspective was um, interesting in my opinion as well, having a kindergartner this year as well. Um, the previous speaker earlier had, had talked about the AP and the fact that four or five days would be helpful. Um, the vote, the way it happened, we're all educated people here and I understand that you probably understand this, but that date was not selected um, by the group that referred the vote. It was simply mandated by the state of South Dakota that if you refer it, you have to start after Labor Day. And so there wasn't any room for compromise. There wasn't, hey, let's talk about this and have it be whatever that day is. And so that was the date that we were left with um, with that three year start. With that in mind, though, the previous speaker, like I said, talked about the AP and saying four days would make a big difference to them. And that puts it at that last Monday of August. That last Monday of August would give those AP students those extra four or five days. And we can be mindful and compromising to give them a couple more days, but also be mindful that we maybe shouldn't start after Labor Day, but that 20th is so, early. It's still the same thing again. And it just doesn't feel like much has changed other than maybe a day. And so if we could discuss maybe having that last that last Monday, I think that would certainly be beneficial. The other point I wanted to make, I know there's been a lot of talk about the survey. And the point I want to make with that is it's, it's great to survey that, but we all can agree in this room also that it's not scientific. It does not um, reach out to the average voter. It doesn't reach out to the taxpayers. It doesn't reach out to the business community. And that's okay, because this was important to gauge the stakeholders, and that was the point of it, was to gauge those stakeholders. And um, so, good. However, at the same time, we need to be careful that when it does go to a vote, it's everyone gets the opportunity, and so that's probably why we see some changes with that, and that's why the vote happened the way it did. So I just hope that we can continue the conversation this forum has been amazing. It's been so uh, respectful. Uh, I know it's certainly an emotional issue for a lot of people um, that have been on both sides of this particular issue. So thanks for your time and thanks for being um, invested in your children's education as well as your own education, since I know there's a handful of students here as well. Thank you for your time. talk about AP scores and semester tests of when they're going to happen, if it's rather before Christmas, break, or after. But I think the most important thing we need to look at tonight is the survey. There's been a lot of talk about it not necessarily being trustable due to the fact that people could vote more than once, but it doesn't change the fact that 75.7% of students voted for school to start 10 days before Labor Day. These students are the most impacted by our calendar. Yes, every voter should have a say, but in a regular vote like we had in the 2015 calendar change vote, students were not given an option, they weren't given a say. And there were a lot of students who did care. At Roosevelt, for example, there was a lot of the vote yes, there were shirts made, people did, people did care about the vote, and a lot of students felt like they were left out from that decision. So we do want to thank you again for having these forums so that we can come present our ideas as well. But it is important for these students that the calendar change happened when it does, and 64.4% voted to have it before Labor Day. I think that number is important, and it's not being discussed enough because these students are important to it. And what this calendar change is, it's for the students. Academics are what are important here, and they need to be focused on as well. And these students are the ones who are most impacted. Yes, semester test scores stay relatively similar, I believe. But I can say, I'm not sure how many other students felt this way, but I had a large amount of work to do over Christmas break. I had world history assignments. I had chemistry packets. I had a pre-calc worksheet. I had all of these things to do over Christmas break, and it didn't feel like a break to me anymore. It felt like I was wasting time not doing the work that I should have been doing throughout all of Christmas, and over the summer too. With this layer of start date, I do four chapters of chemistry before I got to class. The fifth day of school, I had a chemistry test over everything I was supposed to learn throughout the summer. So yes, having this fall sports before school started is nice. Anyone with summer assignments is still impacted by that they still have to do these assignments before. So I think it's important that we look at the students and see what the students are saying. And clearly the students want the calendar before Labor Day. Thank you. My name is Travis Shearing. I'm a, a parent at All 
City as well. And uh, anybody who knows me, I'm pretty quiet and reserved. And, um, I'll be honest, I came to this simply to understand perspectives because I honestly think, um, I've traveled all over the country with the military and we moved back here about four years ago. Uh, one of the things that I didn't understand the last go around was I don't know that I fully understood, no matter how hard I tried to educate myself, why both sides felt the way they did. Uh, the one thing I'd like to see from the school board, from the school district is maybe take an objective look at the pros and cons for both and put those out for folks uh, so that everybody understands. I understand, and it was extremely divisive, I'll be honest, uh, some of the things that we brought ourselves into the last go around were the things that we try to educate our kids not to do, all right, and not to treat each other that way. Uh, that troubled me. Uh, I spent a lot of time in schools uh, and universities teaching about that uh, and speaking on interventions and how to take care of people, how to treat people the right way. Uh, and I think we're headed down that path again. Uh, so I think we need to take the time uh, and educate ourselves, educate the district, uh, value the opinions of parents, teachers, students, and those folks within the community who maybe don't have any of those stakes. But at the same time, be open to understanding why everybody feels that way, but you can only do that if you take the time to learn why they feel that way. And I don't know that we did that the last time around. Uh, I would appreciate it if the district would take the time to put those together. I know the last time we had elections in November, uh, the state did a great job of, for all the referendum, all the initiatives, explaining the pros and cons. I'd like to see a similar thing. Uh, educate the district, tell us why, what's the pros and cons of the early, what's the pros and cons of the late, and then we can all make an objective decision that's in the best interest of our students for education. for sticking around. I didn't anticipate it would be as long. First of all, I'm Brian Moffat. I'm the superintendent. Um, I wanted to come up and provide a little cover for Mr. Noel <laughs> here tonight and, and say thank you. Sometimes the superintendent says, why don't you go do this? And then he takes all the shots. But also thank our board. Um, when, when we talked about uh, preparing a calendar, one of the things we talked about was a, was a quote that I, that I mentioned when I interviewed. And the quote uh, was a Condoleezza Rice quote quote is, uh, I far prefer the noise of democracy to the silence of tyranny. And we're, we're, hearing, we're hearing a lot of stuff. Some of it's uncomfortable to hear, but I think it's important for us to hear. Uh, I wish I had a sense of prophecy a few months ago to know what I know now. We would have a few different ideas up here for calendars than what we have. But I think, our, I think um, what we have done is going to get us to the point that our point was to listen. Our survey was never intended to be a popular vote. It was, in, it was intended to get the opinions of a lot of different stakeholders. Uh, it's certainly not a scientific vote, but I think it gave us some important information. We knew that the surveys were incomplete and that the, and that the citizen, the average citizen who isn't a teacher, who isn't, a, who isn't a, an employee of the district, who isn't the parent of a student, and that who isn't a student doesn't get to weigh in. So how are we going to get that voice involved? And that's where we came up with the ideas of the public forums. So a um, couple of things I guess I would say. First thing I would say is thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come out and get educated and to give us your opinion. That, that is very much appreciated. The second thing I would tell you is we are listening. And I know if I'm in your shoes, I'm going, talk is cheap. Um, we've got a long way to go. But all of the information that we have, from survey data, to the public forum data, uh, to our student advisory group data that we met with just last week, a lot of data, a lot of information, will now go to the committee. And the committee is something that we didn't have two years ago. So we're hoping to get to a better point to, uh, by the end of this semester than we were two years ago. If we fail in 
that mission, it won't be because we didn't try. And I, and I, I really, I really, I'm, I'm proud of our board for allowing us to go this route. I'm proud of Mr. Knoll for standing in front of you. And as I sat back there and listened, I just thought it was important that I get up here and, and say something. And I didn't want Jamie to have to suffer all the slings and arrows. Um, so we, we are listening, and I know the proof will be in the pudding. I guess the last thing I would say is we're not done yet. So uh, please don't think that what you see here is a finished product. We'll, we'll keep working. And again, we'll, th that's it for tonight. I want to thank you for your time and your energy. Could you uh, put your cookies down, please? Uh, security, escort this gentleman out, please. Come on, Soda Pop, let's go.